I hope you're happy. It's you and you alone. I swore I'd never touch an FA-20. I swore to myself I would never build one. But we're, do we're touching an FA-20. It almost makes me just filled with joy. I feel like I've become little Timmy and I'm wandering through the woods, searching for the meaning of life, walking up and down these aisles, looking for what really matters, and I just can't seem to find it. And then I stumble into a hole, and there it is. It's like a pit of rabid wolves attacking me, left and right, biting my calves, biting my ankles like a pack of little chihuahuas. And there's our savior, the glorious, dirty, Okay, on a real note though, you guys have been asking me to build an FA-20 on the channel, do FA-20 stuff, FA-20 this, FA-20 that for months, years. So, I'm giving you guys a little bit of FA-20 stuff today. I'm gonna show you how to assemble an FA-20 short block, and to be honest, it's a lot easier than doing it on an EJ. Now, you guys are gonna notice some stuff with this, I already have bearings and everything like that in the block. I've already gone through and I've already done all my measurements on this thing, so we're literally just assembling this guy today. So, well, we have to grind piston rings, that's the one thing I haven't done yet, but we can do that here in a little bit. So, if you have never built an FA-20, if you've never built a Subaru engine, this will be a walkthrough. For most FAs and FB engines, they're gonna assemble relatively the same as this one. So, let me show you what I got on the table today, and uh, let's start building an FA, baby. So today I'm gonna be showing you guys how to assemble an FA-20. Now these do assemble differently than an EJ-25 does. For example, these, you do not attach the connecting rod to the crankshaft and then put that in the cases. For this, you, are, you just take the crank, you put it in the cases, you bolt the cases together, and then you've got a unit. And then you go ahead and put the piston onto the connecting rod and drop those in. So this is a little bit more of a traditional engine build for those of you that have built like inline engines or anything like that. Now with any standard EJ, always connect up the connecting rod to the crankshaft, then put that in the cases, then seal up the cases, and then you put the piston in after through the access panel plugs located on the engine. So FA-20s, they just assemble a lot easier. So with this, I've already got the main bearings in both of the cases set in here. I've already gone through and done all my tolerancing on everything like that, and we are set and good to go. Remember, when it comes to measuring engine tolerances, there's a lot of back and forth you gotta do to make sure everything's solid. So I'll link a video like right up there somewhere um, showing you guys how to measure tolerances. The video is on an EJ, but it's the exact same principle as this. You have to go through, measure all of the journals on the crankshaft, measure the bore of each of the mains, make sure that your dimensions are where they need to be, because if they're not, you're either gonna have too high or too low of oil pressure. So make sure you do get that information important whenever it comes to building an engine print out the documentation um, even if you've done it a hundred times i've done these quite a few times now i always 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 print out the fsm or the technical information when it comes to doing this so that way if you ever have a question if you're ever stuck on something or if you need to reference something you already have all that information available to you to be able to do all this stuff especially when it comes to torquing down the cases together because there is a torque sequence and a torque value range that you do need to hit on every single bolt so let's get to work so we We've got both of our cases here. There is only one O-ring on an FA-20 that you do need to seal up and that is right up here. It is for the timing cover. On the left hand case, there's only one O-ring. It's really, really hard to miss. I'll put a little thing in the video. So that will go right there. Now, before we go putting any of the sealant on there, I do recommend you get some OEM three bond. Whenever it comes to doing case halves or engines like this, I always three bond versus using um, like the right stuff or anything like that from like AutoZone. It just, it's a little extra peace of mind. You also don't need a crazy expensive caulking gun like this. This is just a specific one that I use for some of the stuff that I have. We're gonna clean off all of the journals with a little bit of brake clean. Clean off our crankshaft. Now these do come coated with just a light film of oil on them. Like I said, I've already wiped all this stuff down once, but when it comes to building an engine, clean, make sure everything is as clean as physically possible. Now we're gonna take some assembly lube and we're just gonna lightly lube up each of the tops of these bearings. So when it comes to lubricating bearings like this, um, personally, I just like to use my finger. Now that we've got everything lubed up, we're gonna go ahead and get our three bond applied to the specific areas that it needs to. Um, I believe it goes up here around all of these bolts, but like I said, 
we have a printout for it so we know the path to take for where the three bond goes. So let's get some three bond on here. So we're gonna grab this case half. Personally, this is how I like to do it. I like to just reference the like the thing I'm working on with the photo that I have. So that way they're in the same orientation. So that way it's a lot easier to follow what you're doing. I thought that you think it might be a I'm gonna follow this guy around. Sealant around all these circles. All right, now double check. We got sealant, 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 sealant. Sweet, that's easy. So we have all of our sealant already in here. Just like that. Then we can grab our other half of the case, slide that up and on. And we can start bolting everything together with the case bolts. Now, whenever it comes to doing this, please don't reuse case bolts. Just buy new ones. So, just give it some love taps. You don't have to be hella aggressive with it either. Like I said, love taps. And now comes the fun time of when we gotta put the cases and torque them all together. So I'm gonna take a little bit of engine oil and just put, oh my God, that was a lot of engine oil. Not a little bit, I just spilled that everywhere. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our case bolts one at a time, grab some engine oil and just lube up the threads with engine oil on these so that way um, they go in nicely. They're not gonna cross thread or anything like that. Also make sure you have your washers on there too. Otherwise things will not seal up properly. Oh my God, dude, it didn't even record putting, all right, I, all I did was get the case bolts in. It didn't even hit record or it wasn't recording when I hit it. So just to give you guys the sequence, all we've done is get the bolts in there. We've got number one, right here, number two directly below it, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven, number eight, which is outside of the case back here, number nine, which is the top right, and number 10, which is the bottom left. So now we gotta torque all of these down. So this is when it gets fun. So we're gonna start off by torquing everything down in this numerical order here that is on the instructions. We're gonna torque everything down to 25.8 foot pounds. So I'm gonna grab my torque wrench. Loosen all bolts by 180 in numerical order. Tighten all bolts back to 25.8 foot pounds. I feel like this is getting a little redundant. I believe that first torque sequence that we just did was just to get the bolts, um, to get the cases to like meet up properly. So. Now we're going to 25.8 foot pounds in the order that we just took them all off. Are you gonna have me loosen them all again? Loosen the mounting bolts, four places by 180. Okay, so there's only four of them we're loosening this time. Okay. You're gonna have me tighten them again and then loosen them again? Tighten! <laughs> okay. I'm pretty sure this is just to make sure the cases seat. When I did this the first time, it was kind of funny. Uh, to 12, all right, so now we're only tightening these to 12.5. Now it's gonna, probably gonna have me loosen some more, isn't it? So retighten the four bolts that I just did by 60 degrees. Loosen the mounting bolts by 180 degrees in numerical order. So these are all the other ones. Next up, the top five bolts or whatever, the, however many there are. Uh, tighten all of those down to 18.4. After tightening, if the liquid gasket is squeezed out in the seal surface area of the chain cover and oil pan, uh, remove it. But all these guys I know. Five. Hard part's done. The rest of this is easy. I am gonna grab a rag and just wipe up the squeeze out. I don't like to leave the squeeze out on the engine. I wipe them up pretty much all the time. I just think it looks better. Don't use brake clean either because that can seep in between and eat the seal on the inside while it's still curing. So just kind of legit, just wipe it up. Don't want any in the timing chain area up here. Same with the front fascia right there. Beautiful. Look at that. 
spins beautifully. So now that we have our crankshaft installed in here, you guys can see it rotates nice and smoothly. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get our piston ring set up for our pistons. Now we're gonna start off in cylinders two and four here. I've already got the pistons labeled for where they're going to go. So we have cylinder two, cylinder four. Now with FA20 pistons, you're gonna have like this groove right here for the direct injection. Um, make sure that that is facing up. I just put T for top on both of them and then an arrow pointing forward because those are gonna point towards the front of the engine. Uh, you can wipe that off, it's just on Sharpie. So these will just go in nicely. Or a lot of, one thing a lot of people ask me is like, what do you set piston to wall clearance to? I personally do not. I do not set piston to wall clearance. I let the machine shop do that. So what I do is I'll buy the pistons for the engine that I'm working on. I'll send the pistons with the block and they will bore and hone the pistons or they'll bore and hone the engine to the pistons that I sent them and the machine shop takes care of that for me. So that way I'm not having to worry about any of that. So huge shout out to Outfront for taking care of that for us. So now we're gonna start going through here on piston rings. I'm gonna get these ground down. If you don't know how to set up piston rings, I'll give you like a brief walkthrough on how to measure them. And then I'm just gonna time lapse through grinding them because this little grinder does take a little while to get all the piston rings set up. So I'm gonna get all the rings set up. Once all the rings are set up, we'll be good to go. I'm just gonna take some assembly lube. You can use oil too if you want. And I'm just gonna lube up the top of the bore here so that way we don't scuff it up. Like I said, you can use engine oil too if you'd like for this part. I just don't wanna have to fish mine back out and make another huge mess with it. We got that nicely lubed up. I also need to start working on the RS to get all this other crap out of here. There's just stuff everywhere. We're gonna grab our piston rings. And I'll grab the camera and I'll show you guys this here in a minute. But now when it comes to piston rings, you're gonna get like a little stack of them. You're gonna have quite a few here. So this like crunchy, fun looking one, this is oil control ring. You've got one that is your oil scraper ring. You've got one that is your compression ring, and you've got two that go with your uh, crunchy oil control ring. So the oil control ring, these three right here, I'm trying to like make it so it focuses on my hand. You've got the crunchy ring, that's gonna go in between these two smaller rings here. And normally, yeah, these ones have it too. There's a small tang on the end of the ring gap right there. That is going to go into one of the grooves on the piston, and I'll show you guys that when we set that up. But these three are all your oil control rings, so you're just, you're not going to do anything to these. You are not going to gap these. You are not going to do anything to this. So you're going to have two more rings after that. You're going to have this darker one, which is typically going to be your oil scraper ring, and then you've got this like more silver one here. I'm trying to get it to like focus on it. You've got this more silver one here, which is your compression ring. Now on them, there should be a dot or some type of marking, which indicates. Uh, top side of the ring. If not, you can always run your finger across it to feel it. Did they really not put any? Oh, okay, yeah, this one has a dot, so they both have dots on them. What you're gonna do, you're gonna come over here to your engine, you're gonna take the ring, and you're just gonna pinch it together and push it in like that. So you guys can see the top of the ring sticking out there, and then you're just gonna push it down. I'm gonna push this into the engine a little bit more. And you're just gonna push it down, so that way it kind of just sits in there. You're gonna take one of your pistons, you're gonna stick it in the bore, and you're gonna make the piston just sit level like that, boom. And then once that's done, you have your piston ring in there, but you still gotta measure it. We're at seven thou. Dope, you're gonna need feeler gauges. So you'll see the small little gap right there. That's what you're measuring. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the oil scraper ring and the compression ring set up for size on cylinders two and four, and then we can start getting this thing assembled. To use them, I mean, it's super easy. You take the ring, you set it on this guy, you grind it down, you file off any burrs that might be on the edges of the ring, and then you test again and you make sure. Remember, you can only take material off. You cannot add material back on. So let's get some piston ring set up, and then we can start assembling uh, cylinders two and four, and then jump over to one and three. I already have one piston and rod in there, so I wanna walk you guys through this one. So we've got all of our rings here, I've got all these filed down. So, so we're gonna go ahead and clean off the rings. We're just gonna wipe them down to make sure that any of this extra schmoo is just off of here on the oil scraper ring and the compression ring. Before you go like trying to slap all this stuff in, what I advise you do is make sure you do have the right size piston ring compressor tool. It's an 86 mil piston ring compressor. This is from my old Evo. Uh, if we take a set of calipers here and we measure, they turn on. If we measure the piston itself, it comes back at the same size, 86 mil. So make sure you have the right size piston ring compressor for whatever you're doing. Start these rings. I always start with the oil control ring first just because it's the most annoying. Um, take the little braided guy, I set the piston upside down, and just slide it on. It's gonna go on the bottom most. Remember, oil control ring, bottom most. And then you're gonna get your two little 
oil control ring stopper guys. Now, like I said, there's a tang on one of them. Now on the piston, you've got little spots for the tang. So it's a little difficult to do and show you guys, but normally I'll get it in it's tang first and then just kind of rotate it around and it'll go right in getting your home are you too good for your home oh my gosh see it moved off the tang there we go that one is in where's the tang i want to see the fucking tang before i do anything else okay the tang is in its home now to get the top one on <gasps> thank god it's in the oil control ring is always the worst just remember that so now you're gonna need a pair of piston ring pliers you don't want to go trying to just fucking stretch these things on just grab the right pliers uh, they literally slide right into each end. Make sure we have our dot facing up. So the dot on the ring will face up on the oil scraper ring. If you're using like, some pistons have dots on both of them or some type of like lettering. For some reason, these ones don't. I don't, I don't know why. Now we get our compression ring in. Same thing, grab it and stretch it on. Get it all lined up into its groove on the piston like that. So I got all the rings on the piston. Now make sure all of your ring gaps are offset. Um, you don't want to have all your ring gaps right in the same spot. Now with these, we are ready to get the rod put onto our piston. So let me open up a wrist pin here. Now one thing to remember with the connecting rods is these are married to each other. So you cannot mix and match cam caps to or rod caps, I guess I should, I should say, Jesus fuck, to other rods. Um, they have to stay with whatever rod they came with. We're gonna wipe down the bearings one more time also to get the connecting rod onto the piston. So this can be a little bit annoying. Um, what I like to do first is get one of the wrist pin clips in. I don't preferably like these wrist pin clips. I like the ones that you get from CP because it's more of a snap ring versus then like a little clip. God, dude, get in there. And they don't even give you like a little tang or anything to grab onto. It's just like, hey, good luck. Now we know that that is the first of the engine now we can grab our connecting rod i always do logos forward slide that guy right in there grab our wrist pin slide it through the first hole slide it through the connecting rod and into the second hole now we got to get this other wrist pin clip in which is going to be equally as annoying as the last one was wrist pin clips are in grab some assembly lube i'm gonna lube up the sides here make this guy going into the bores a lot easier we're gonna grab our rod bearing we're gonna line it up so that way it goes tang to tang. Grease on there. Grab our other rod cap. Go tang to tang again. Tang to tang. Back up to the fun part of getting the piston into the bore, which sometimes can be a little bit annoying to do. So I'm gonna set this rod cap aside so that way we don't smack it and it goes flying somewhere. So in order to get the piston in there, um, with this one, it's a little bit annoying. That's why I'm not a huge fan of this one. So slide the rod through the bottom, bring it up. Uh, I kind of have to like compress the rings as it goes on with this one. It's really annoying with this piston ring compressor, but it went on super easy that time, which is weird. Um, sick, now we can go ahead and slap this in the engine and get this rod and piston in. I know this part can freak some people out. Remember, make sure you have your piston going the right direction. You slide it down into the bore, get it centered like that. I'm gonna make sure the crank is kind of out of the way for now. Now, you shouldn't have to be too aggressive with this. Just some light taps. And it should go in like that. You don't, if you're beating the shit out of it, it's probably not gonna go in. Tap this guy down some more. Keeping an eye on it as it comes down. So that way it comes onto the crank. Just like that. I'm gonna throw a little bit more grease onto the crank down there. So I need to take a look in there. So we have the tang facing us. So we take our rod cap. Remember, tang to tang. Your ARP lubricant that should have came with your connecting rods. Just get a little bit on the threads. Get her in. I'm just doing these ones by hand for now and we'll come back and fully torque them down once we have all four rods pistons in there. I just decided we're just gonna torque down this side. I'm already over here. So we're gonna be torquing these guys down to 60 foot pounds. They do give you a sheet with what you need to torque them down to and what your bolt stretch is. I tried to get my bolt stretch gauge in here and I can't get it in there accurately. So we're gonna go off the torque values. I have found in the past that the torque value on here is pretty much spot on for what the bolt stretch is. So totally fine. I feel totally comfortable doing that. So we're gonna be going to 60 foot pounds on these guys. Just gotta pop over and do cylinders one and three. And this FA20, is ready to make some power. Go ahead and do this side. We're gonna do the exact same thing. We're going to get our ring gap set up, get the pistons installed, get the rods installed, and then we have a built FA20, which should uh, 
hold some good sauce, man. Single make some power is what we like. We like power. We like FAs that make power. We, we just like cars that make power. And just like that, we have a built FA20, you guys. So once again, make sure that you do have the port injection seat cut at the top of the engine. And aside from that, like, dude, this is like, these are easy. These are super easy engines to build. Honestly, it feels good. It feels solid all the way through. Built FA20. Easier than an EJ, in my opinion. All right, you guys, so that's all I got. I just wanted to show you guys the basics of running through and building one of these FA20s. It's really not too bad. It's, it is easier than an EJ. I still prefer building EJs over the FAs. Um, but you know what? People are people want what they want. So that's all I got for you guys on this one. If you found the video helpful, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up. Turn it black, blue, green, yellow, purple, silver, cyan, whatever color it turns to you. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel and you want to be, I'll put it in one of these corners. No idea which one quite yet. But with that, I will catch you guys in the next one. So peace out, homies. Woo!